Do you like the look of soft watercolour but not sure how to do it? In this video, I show you how. Hello there, Michelle Short here with Terrific Tags with Michelle. Today I have a card to share with you creating soft watercolour layers on flowers. So let's get started. This is the beautiful Craft a Flower Fragrant Peony Layering Die Set. There are two flowers in the set, each with three layers. And then there are also some leaves as well. And I'm going to be using these flowers for my focal point on my card today. I wanted to show you the great way that Autonew has their dies. So each of the layers has a different shape in the centre and that way you know which layers go with which flower. So the one there on the left has got kind of like a keyhole image and the one on the right has kind of like an arrow. So one lot of petals is going to work with the keyhole and one lot is going to work with the petals. They are also numbered as well so that you know which layer is at the bottom and which layer is at the top. You can definitely change that around if you wanted to, but it is a good guide to be able to know how to layer up these flowers. I'm going to die cut them from some watercolour paper. This watercolour paper is labelled as cold press but actually it's got a really soft texture I think, more like hot press personally. And so I run that through my die cutting machine to cut those petals out. I'm then going to add colour onto these with the dual tip pens. So I'm starting off with the Tahitian Terrace set and I've taken a blue and a purple and then also two pink shades. And then I'm taking the green shades from the Islands of Fiji set. So these pens, as the name suggests, is a dual tip. One side is a brush tip and one side is a fine tip. And they work perfectly with water. So I've taken a watercolour palette here and I'm drawing some of the blue shade of the marker onto this palette. This is Eastern Sky. I'm then taking a round watercolour brush. This is a number four dipping that in my water and then I'm mixing that with the pen and then dabbing that onto the petals here. I want some of the areas to be quite light, like very very light, so pretty much the colour of the watercolour paper. So I'm focusing most of the colour towards kind of one side of each of these petals. I want this to be really quite soft and sort of ethereal in a way and so I don't really want too many harsh lines so what I do is I dab the watercolour on first and then go in with a clean brush and sort of try and blend that out so that I don't get too many of those harsh lines. This is really really pale at this stage you can barely see it on camera but I do want to work in layers to build that colour up. I'm starting off with the petals being dry and so that really it didn't really matter whether I wanted to do like a wet on wet technique or a wet on dry technique but I decided to just do the dry one to start with. So adding some of that and also to the center of the flower as well I'm going to do that the same color. I don't need that other center piece on the top right hand corner there because that's going to get covered up by that top piece. So now I'm going in with another layer of this blue, adding a little bit more to try and intensify the colour a little bit. But like I said, I really want these to be quite soft. So I'm kind of fiddling a little bit here to try and remove any of those harsh lines. And then I can just keep dabbing the watercolour on top. I'm then going in with the purple which is called Hydrangea and then I'm taking that brush and then I can dab that colour on top and this again I'm not being too neat about it. This technique kind of is known as messy watercolouring. Although I it is messy at this point in time. I don't think the finished result is necessarily messy and I'm not, although I'm trying to be sort of loose about it, I do know where I want this colour to sort of hopefully end up. 
So that at the moment I would say is quite messy but I'm going back in here with just a clean brush and blending those edges out. But I really love how the blue and the purple work together to make sort of more of a bluish toned purple. So again just blending that colour out and here I'm going in to add a little bit more purple on top and because the flower petals are already wet this is just going to blend in really nicely and kind of give me a little bit of a mottled look which is what I was going for. So just adding kind of small dabs of that mainly to one side of these petals. And then again I can just go in with a clean brush to try and make sure that there's not too many harsh lines and it is really easy to kind of fiddle with this for a long time but in the end I decided that I was happy with how it was so I'm going to set those aside to dry. Just making sure to remove those harsh edges if possible. And then for the pink flowers, I'm using Pink Pearl to start with. This is a really pale shade of pink. So again, just doing the same thing that I did with the other flower, starting off with the wet on dry technique. And like I said, this, this colour in particular is really, really pale. So I did go in with a few layers. I'm then going to bring in a darker shade of pink and this is Coral Berry and it is quite corally in shade. I wanted it to be a little bit more pink toned so I am going to bring in a little bit of purple as well to try and dull that colour down a little bit. It is quite bright. So this is the same hydrangea colour that I used on the first flower. And it does, although it's not going to look purple on it, it is just going to blend with that pink and create a little bit more of a sort of purple toned pink rather than a red toned pink. So again, I'm going in with that clean brush just to remove any harsh edges. And then for the leaves, I'm using Bamboo and Grassfield and these are from the Islands of Fiji set. And again, I'm just going to do the exact same thing. This one definitely does look very messy. And it does kind of, in the end, look, I suppose, a little bit more messy. But because I didn't necessarily want the like to there to be white on one certain part of it rather than like I did with the petals. For this one, I just wanted there to be some lighter areas and some darker areas. So I can go in with that lighter shade and then go in with the darker shade on top. And if I get any areas where I wanted it to be a little bit lighter, I can go in with a cloth or a paper towel and just dab up some of that excess watercolour. I've then taken a panel of white cardstock and I'm using one of the larger tags from the Terrific Tags die set. And I'm actually going to create a banner for my card rather than a tag. So I'm holding that down with some low tack tape and when I run it through my die cutting machine I want to do some partial die cutting so I don't want to cut the top part off of this tag. So I'm going to place my plate further down that tag so anything above where that plate is is not going to cut and anything underneath the plate is going to cut. So I can remove that die there and you can see that it's just cut the bottom part of that tag. So I'm just going to cut off the excess here with some scissors and then I'm going to cut the edges with a guillotine. I'm not too concerned if I cut a little bit of the banner shape off of either side as long as I make them equal on each side. So I can flip that over and then I can cut the other side. And this is a great way to create a banner on a card. And just give something my flowers to sit on. It is a little bit too long at this point but it's better to be long and cut it down than be too short. So I'm just marking the area there with a pencil and then I can cut that down. I'm then adding some instant dimension foam tape onto the back of it. Remove the backings off of that foam tape and then I can place that down onto an A2 size white card base. So that's a finished size of four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. 
and that's just going to ground those flowers a little bit. My flowers have now dried so I'm going to adhere the layers together with some liquid glue. So just lining up that keyhole there in the middle and then I can use some tweezers just to help me place those layers on top. And because I'm using the liquid glue, I can sort of wiggle them around a little bit. And this piece here is literally just so that you can see where the top piece needs to be placed. So I didn't need to add the watercolour on top because it's going to get completely covered up. So I can just adhere that top piece and then to add a little bit of dimension onto these flowers and make them so that they're not so flat, I'm just bending some of the petals with my fingers. And then I can do the exact same thing with the pink flower, just lining up that arrow image in the middle. And then I can finish off with this piece here at the top for the flower centre. I'm then going to arrange my elements on my card first before I stick anything down. So I can just add the leaves and then I can add the flowers on top. And I am going to have that purple flower overhanging the card base slightly. It does mean that it's not going to fit in a standard size envelope, but I do really like the look of it. So I'm just cutting the stems off of those leaves. I didn't think I really needed the extra stem in the centre because it's going to get covered up anyway. So adding some liquid glue onto the back of those and then I can pop those down. And then I'm going to add the flowers with the liquid glue as well. Most of the time I do tend to add flowers with foam tape, but I thought that there was already quite a lot of dimension on this card. So I'm adding them with the liquid glue instead. So I can just place that flower down and I don't want to add anything heavy on top to kind of hold these down while the glue dries because of that dimension that I've added to the petals. So I just held my fingers there for a little while while the glue dried. I've then stamped and heat embossed a sentiment from this Soft Blossoms stamp set. This is one of my favourite stamp sets for sentiments in particular. I love the floral image in it, but I really love the font on these sentiments. And it's definitely become one of my favourite sentiments. I've added some foam tape onto the back of that. And then I'm popping that down onto the card using a T-square ruler to try and help me do this down straight. Now, because I'm adhering this down onto the petals and the petals aren't sort of flat against that card, basically underneath, it does sort of, it kind of is placed on the petals rather than, like I said, on the card itself. And so it did take me a little kind of time to sort of wiggle this to try and get it straight. And it kind of, like I said, is hovering there a little bit, but it stuck down really well. So there's no problem with that. I then just finished off with a couple of iridescent bubbles. So I really love how that soft watercolour looks on those flowers. I did create another card kind of off camera and for this one I did get a little bit of extra kind of colour on those flowers on the purple flower and then a little bit less on the right one on the pink one and so I do really like how both of them turned out. Links to the products that I used will be listed in the description box on YouTube and over on the Altenew blog. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. Hey there, Lydia here. I really do hope that you've just enjoyed the video. If so, please subscribe to the Alter New YouTube channel. Also turn on the notification bell so you can get your daily dose of crafty techniques and tutorials just like this. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. -bye.